How we know the Sandy Hook shooting is a psychological operation and a hoax. The December 14, 2012, Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting in which the perpetrator, Adam Lanza, shot and killed his mother at home, 20 schoolchildren, 6 teachers, and then himself, received international attention. Governments and world leaders offered their condolences, while tributes and vigils by people were made in honor of the victims. U.S. President Barack Obama gave a televised address on the day of the shootings, saying, we're going to have to come together and take meaningful action to prevent more tragedies like this, regardless of the politics. Adam Lanza was allegedly so competent with computers that the FBI couldn't recover information from his PC. Yet, he had no Twitter, Facebook or MySpace, or social media of any kind. Neighbors reported him to be a gamer, yet there are no records of his gaming online. He was admitted to Western Connecticut State University in 2009, and maintained a 3.26 GPA including an A in computer science. Despite this, he only graduated sophomore in high school, and was allegedly autistic. There were no pictures of Adam Lanza in the Newtown U book, but his markedly generic ID for something called the Newtown Technology Team was found in his room after the crime, just as there is no footage of him going to ward or entering Sandy Hook Elementary that day, no gun shop footage either, because the guns belonged to his mother. No pictures of carnage can be seen anywhere, other than bulletproof glass allegedly broken by an AR-15. In the distance from his house to Sandy Hick Elementary, Adam would have passed a total of eight other schools. Why enter this one? A picture of the gun in the trunk, courtesy of the New York Post, looks suspiciously planted. It looks like a Russian Mollet Veer 12, it's a very unlikely weapon for a single mom from New England. Look at the cleanliness of Lanza's mom's car. They were obviously, at first, trying to build the narrative that his mom was a teacher and he was autistic and angry and he was gonna take it out on other teachers and students. He used an AR-15 to kill lots of kids, ergo we need to get rid of the AR-15, it could happen to you. Then, when some elements were botched, like putting the long weapon in the trunk, or the inability to produce a teaching record for Mrs. Lanza, or the lack of any record of him buying rifles, and the unlikeliness of killing oneself with an AR-15, they had to cover those tracks, through a disinformation campaign. The reality after that narrative was dismissed was that Nancy Lanza was a stockbroker and firearms enthusiast who taught Adam how to shoot at a nearby gun range. How coincidental! This single mom found the time in between being a stockbroker to teach a 20-year-old how to shoot an AR-15 so accurately that he was able to kill 20-plus people without missing one. Look at this picture of what they're saying is his home. Utterly sterile, paintless and posterless walls, it looks like a room they arrange to be barely believable as a living quarters, and pretty much just a Spartan room with video games, which the press wants to push as having shaped his homicidal inclinations. Adam Lanza's death certificate was amended before being released on a Freedom of Information appeal. The initial certificate that was provided claimed he died the 13th of December 2012, when the actual shootings were alleged to have happened the next day. He had no funeral. There was a new security system at Sandy Hook Elementary by all accounts, including bulletproof glass. Yet, Adam was able to get in with at least two guns, the AR-15 that he used to shoot kids and the handgun he used to shoot himself. The CBS affiliate reporter Tony Aiello reported that Adam was let in because he was recognized as a child of a teacher at the school. This is obviously false, why would they report that? Business Insider reported Lanza was wearing a black mask why would they let him in? ILO's report alone proves that there was a conspiracy to frame the narrative with Nancy Lanza as a teacher, potentially at Sandy Hook. Though over 150 shots were allegedly shot, all witnesses only report hearing a gunshot or two gunshots at most, over an intercom. Then it was reported that only two handguns were used in the killings, and that the AR-15 was left in the car. When you watch the footage of the retrieval of the gun, you can see clearly it's a shotgun. Adam Lanza was 20 years old when he allegedly shot himself in the school. Yet, no photos or footage exist of the suicide, not on any deep web or darker side of the internet either. No suicide note exists. When I Google Columbine Massacre, 
I can see the two shooters' bloody corpses, who were younger than Lanza. Why do they not scrub those, if it's about detesting gun violence, or respect for families? I can see Kurt Cobain's dead body, except for his missing face, on hundreds of media platforms. I can even see the gore from John Binet Ramsey's six-year-old body and Sharon Tate's pregnant bloodied corpse on the internet. But not Lanza's. Late on April 4, 2013, the Maryland General Assembly passed Governor Martin O'Malley's gun control bill, the Firearms Safety Act of 2013. It bans the purchase of 45 types of assault weapons and limits gun magazines to 10 rounds. It requires handgun licensing and fingerprinting for new gun owners. In the early morning hours of April 4, 2013, the Connecticut General Assembly passed new restrictions to the state's existing assault weapons ban. Governor Daniel Malloy signed them into law later the same day. The law banned the sale or purchase of magazines capable of holding more than 10 rounds of ammunition like those used in the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting, and required universal background checks for all firearm purchases. The chief medical examiner on the shooting was Dr. H. Wayne Carver. He allegedly oversaw the conditions of the bodies of more than 20 children less than 24 hours before a press conference. When asked what the children were wearing, he says, kid stuff. When asked what caliber were the bullets, he says, after many literal us, there were lots of them. How is that possible if they were all killed with the AR-15? I don't know yet was the answer to the question, did the gunman kill himself with the rifle? Would it not be pretty obvious right away if the gunman was killed by the rifle? Which caliber of the handgun compared to the rifle of these uh, shooting victims were on this incident? Uh, it's a good thing it's not being prosecution because then I couldn't answer that. But and what caliber were the shooting victims? Uh, question was what caliber were these bullets and I know I probably know more about firearms than most pathologists but if I say it in court they yell at me and don't make me answers so uh, I don't know there were lots of them uh, 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 we did not bring the bodies and the families into contact we took uh, pictures of them um, you can control the situation uh, depending on your photographer, and I have very good photographers. Uh, no, I don't. How young? Sorry, I don't. <laughs> how young was the youngest that the gunman killed himself with the rifle? No, I don't. I, I don't know yet. You think after the thousands of people I've seen shot, I could answer that question? But I, it's, if I attempted to answer it in court, there'd be an objection, and they'd win. <laughs> Obviously, I was at the scene. It wasn't a tent. It was this magnificent thing. One of the highlights of, of my administration is that we make them as nondescript and unmarked as possible. Just yeah. to foil you guys. I, I just... You don't know. You gotta check again. The most infamous actor involved is Robbie Parker, who is perhaps the most suspicious element of the official story. Here's what you are to believe. 27 people were killed, and their bodies were kept in the school until all bodies were identified. Robbie Parker, father of one of the children, walks out of the very building full of dead kids, including the corpse of his own daughter. He is obviously and visibly smiling and laughing. When he sees cameras are on him, he asks, Start! And begins crying and giving a one-way, scripted-sounding monologue about the circumstances. In a situation like this, I remember at Virginia Tech when I went out there, parents, loved ones of slain young people wanted to remember their sons and their daughters, and as a result, they spoke and made a statement. Uh, so we'll see if uh, Robbie Parker, I assume he's going to come out to the microphones now and make a statement. Uh, looks like the family is there, and they're getting ready to make uh, to come to the microphone, so we'll listen in. Okay. My name's Robbie Parker.
Parker makes the following claims about his six-year-old deceased daughter, who was in first grade. Emily was a mentor to her two little sisters, delighting in teaching them how to read, dance, and find the simple joys in life. Emily's laughter was infectious. She was beautiful, blonde, always smiling, bright blue eyes. Emily was always willing to try new things. Other than food, that pedantic detail is an obvious attempt at trying to fill out her personality. If a meal was real and was just murdered, less than 24 hours earlier, are you really going to think to elaborate on her dietary preferences? For being six years old, Emily's personality was very developed. The blonde and bright blue eye claims are obviously to build a mental image that the general public would sympathize with. Who describes their dead daughter's hair and eye color? Much like Scarlett Lewis's claims, Parker emphasizes his daughter's physical features. This is presumably so the audience watching at home builds a personal image of her, and thus sympathizes. Parker brought up the Emily Parker Fund on Facebook twice in a less than 10-minute speech. The FBI has a statewide report for violent crimes each year. The 2012 report shows zero murders in Newtown. The FBI claims this is a clerical error. Of all the places to make such an error, the location of the Sandy Hook shooting is probably not the best one. I don't know which is worse. An FBI who lies about child murder, or an FBI who can't even get a nationwide legislation creating events kill count right. CNN reported Alex Israel was a classmate of Lanza's, and she claimed he was different and agreed that he excelled at math, and claimed there was something off about him. When interviewed by Piers Morgan. Yet, she was actually only his classmate in elementary school. She later says, I mean I was never in any of his classes. Alex also claimed that Nancy Lanza was a kindergarten teacher in the interview there's that narrative again she was not ever a teacher. Sounds like CNN had a half-baked narrative there, that didn't work and had to be ditched. Israel claims that Lanza was, I would say, a genius, a little bit above the rest of us. If it's all true and there's no conspiracy afoot, why not go to the school and take some samples and pictures and set this conspiracy theory to rest? But we cannot, because the government is melting down and demolishing the school, and the demolition team had to sign NDAs. Scarlett Lewis, one of the mothers who tells us that her son wrote nurturing, healing, love on their family chalkboard shortly before he died. She says that if Adam Lanza got those things the tragedy would never have happened. I feel like Jesse's with me all the time, but this is where I come to visit Jesse. I'd hear myself saying it, and I'd say, that can't be the reality of it. Jesse was shot in the forehead in his first grade classroom. Like that's but it must be, because you're saying it, and people are listening. It's like so incredibly unbelievable. They're so little, those little tiny bodies, you know, and you think about them riddled with bullet holes. It's like unimaginable. It happens all the time, these mass shootings. And that's not the society that you want to live in. It's not the society that I want to live in. But who, who's going to change that? It has to be us. Almost every parent has a forgiveness narrative toward Adam Lanza and his dad. She claims to have talked to classmates of Adam, who expressed that Lanza was in a tremendous amount of pain, and thus she forgives him. So the best Piers Morgan can do is a classmate of his in elementary school, but Lewis can get a private audience with his real classmates, and no one tries to contact this person. Alison Wyatt was one of the victims of the shooting. The Daily Mail posted this image of Allison along with a story about the shooting. But there's a problem. This isn't Allison Wyatt. A mother named Kathy Gobert spotted the photo of her daughter, whose name is Lily, and the article, and was understandably alarmed. Allison has a memorial website where you can send money, yet the parents are never shown anywhere. Could this be because of the photo fiasco, and not wanting to raise the profile there? The photo for Allison was subsequently changed on all searchable sites to this one. Another aspect of the Parker family, who allegedly only moved to Newtown the year of the murders, that is suspect, is the fact that another Parker daughter was photographed with Obama for a photo op suspiciously, she is wearing the same dress as the press photo that the Parkers supplied of Emily. 
So you have to believe that the family, less than a week later, dressed the sister up in the dead sister's dress, and had her take a picture with Obama. She wasn't at all under duress. The CNN effect is a theory that 24-hour news networks, such as CNN, influence the general political and economic climate. Because media outlets provide ongoing coverage of a particular event or subject matter, they can narrowly focus viewer attention, potentially for prolonged periods of time. This increased attention can affect the market values of companies, legislation, and sectors that find themselves in focus. The only reason fake news cannot be punished in this country is a series of legal loopholes regarding the First Amendment, it's all technically free speech. Yet, under these last two administrations, public opinion has been weaponized by the CNN effect against citizens trying to implement the same right. If you dare say Sandy Hook was fake, or that there is a concerted attempt by a deep state to get legislation passed, most Americans boo and hiss to the tune of you're a conspiracy theorist and deride your lack of care for the children or parents allegedly involved. Still, it either did or did not happen, do you not think it is worth investigating, but merely trusting the government is satisfactory? Francine Wheeler's six-year-old son was allegedly killed in the Sandy Hook shootings. She has an internet movie database account, which one only receives after having acted. She is an actor. Her husband also has an account. He worked for 20 years in New York City as an actor in theater, film and television. Francine worked for Maureen White, a finance chair for the Democratic National Committee who was even invited to the White House by the Clintons. Maureen White is married to controversial Wall Street figure Stephen Ratner, who was a member of Democrats for Bloomberg. Ratner played a part in a kickback scheme involving Democratic funds. Ratner also worked for Obama. Another Sandy Hook mother, Nicole Hockley, also has an IMDb page, and has been an actor. Yet another Sandy Hook mother, Laura Phelps, has acted under the name Jennifer Sexton. The Obama administration and the Democratic Party used the Sandy Hook hoax to create legislation. The way that governments pull off hoaxes is through compartmentalization. Through this technique, each player is only given a piece of the whole picture, on a need-to-know basis. This way, the right hand is observed while the left hand does the necessary actions taken to manufacture a believable scenario. Sandy Hook smells strongly of compartmentalization, in that, though there were over 600 students at Sandy Hook, only a small group were killed, only a small number of people saw the bodies, and almost no one saw the gunman. As opposed to more obviously true scenarios, like Columbine, where many, many students, faculty, parents, etc. can be found to back up every aspect of the story. Is it possible that the Obama administration was keenly aware of the response to Columbine, and needed something similar to push gun legislation? Obama is painted as a hero for saving the children, though he ordered ten times more drone strikes, which included thousands of women and children, in the Middle East than Republican President Bush. Why do these killings not make him sad? And, and from first graders in Newtown. First graders. And from every family who, who never imagined that their loved one would be taken from our lives by a bullet from a gun. Every time I think about those kids, it gets me mad. And by the way, it happens on the streets of Chicago every day. Obama told White House aides he was really good at killing people regarding his drone strike strategy. Hundreds of thousands of children have been killed in the illegal invasion of Iraq and Afghanistan, which Obama exacerbated greatly. Where are the tears for those children? The Obama administration used the CNN effect to their favor by creating the Sandy Hook hoax. Let's look at an aerial view from Google Maps of the Sandy Hook Elementary School. 
Notice that there are no trees or shrubs around the parking lot entrance to the school. Yet, when CNN aired footage of what appears to be first responders running into the building, there were trees, bushes, and grass all around. The official story is this. Homeland Security just so happened to be running a drill at an adjacent school, St. Rose of Lima. This government drill just happened to coincide with the shooting. It is unconfirmed at this time if the footage is from a previously filmed drill or an actual real-time drill that was taking place simultaneously with the reported shooting is what CNN reported. So again, you are to believe that a real shooting just happened to occur one mile from the drill, and that CNN using footage of the drill misleadingly appearing to be first responders entering Sandy Hook Elementary is not suspect, let alone evidence of a hoax. The executive actions signed by President Obama included issuing a presidential memorandum to require federal agencies to make relevant data available to the National Instant Criminal Background Check System Mix. All of the guns in the shooting belong to Adam Lanza's mom, therefore, she would have passed a background check, and the shootings would have happened exactly the same way. Does this not occur to any of the parents, or lawyers, involved? As Council on Foreign Relations figurehead and political strategist Henry Kissinger has said, it's not a matter of what is true that counts, but a matter of what is perceived to be true. Kissinger has also been quoted as saying that upheavals around the time of Obama's presidency could be used by Obama to help create a new world order. This is Sandy Hook Principal Dawn Hoxbrown, who was allegedly killed in the shootings. There's another problem. The same photo was used by Fox News to depict one of the victims of the Boston bombings. If Alex Jones can be sued for millions of dollars for alleging Sandy Hook was a hoax, how can Fox News get away with running her picture for two separate tragedies? Is this not a crime? The Sandy Hook school shooting hoax was not perpetrated to save children from gun violence. It has neither halted gun violence in other incidents nor ended school shootings. It was created specifically to target citizens' Second Amendment rights and slowly acclimatize U.S. citizens to a global legislature that supersedes constitutional law. All the catchphrases and demagoguery that followed is either ignorant of this easily researched fact, or simply wants to believe pastorally that Obama cares about kids and is saving them from evil baddie school shooters. The Sandy Hook school shooting was a globalist hoax to further diminish constitutional rights and save face for President Obama and the Democratic Party. Being in a minority, even in a minority of one, did not make you mad. There was truth and there was untruth, and if you clung to the truth even against the whole world, you were not mad. George Orwell, 1984